Now that we have a register method, uh, let's set up a login method for users to log in. And to help us do that, we'll use the identity sign-in manager. And uh, we'll be using that in this video. Let's first thing, we'll go into our startup class. We'll need to configure our startup class to use the sign-in manager. And then we'll do pretty much what we did in the last video uh, with the register method. We'll create a new controller, new view model, uh, login method. And then towards the end, we'll uh, test our new login API in Postman. And then uh, this link, in, this page in the background, I have that link down in the description right here. Uh, just go down in the description. If you don't feel like Googling it or whatever, just click on that and you'll end up on this page. We're going to be referencing this later on. So let's start off inside of our startup class and let's get that configured with sign-in manager. Open up the startup class, so control P and then startup. Then inside the configure services, we're gonna add on to the builder. This builder here we set up a couple of videos ago when we were setting up identity. Now we're gonna add on to the builder and we're gonna be adding a lot more onto this builder later on. For now, what we're gonna add is the sign-in manager. So we could use this, so builder, dot add sign in manager there it is and then the type is the sign in manager and then the, our user is a is the type from our data access layer make sure you close it up correctly and we don't have to pull anything in because we're already pulling in our user from our um, data access layer and the sign in manager from uh, identity so we don't have to pull anything in that's all we have to do in the startup class save it let's go and create our brand new controller now this controller is going to be our auth controller. It's going to be for like logging users in, retrieving lost passwords, things like that. And I'm going to go and do basically what we did in the last video, just copy and paste one of our existing controllers and just go in and change around the code a little bit. So I'm thinking just copy the employer's controller. That would be good. And just paste that in there. And let's rename it. We'll call it uh, auth controller. That would be good. Okay, and then we'll just go and change all the names here. So this be auth and copy this and paste this. And I'm gonna close this down so we can see better. Okay, now we're gonna be using the user manager. So I'll leave that alone. And then we'll just add in our sign-in manager that we, that we set up in our startup class. So sign-in manager, and there it is. And the type, you guessed it, is gonna be user. And then sign-in manager. You can call this whatever you want. I like to keep it just pretty much the same so I know what it is. And then uh, we want to initialize this. Very good. And then I'll add an underscore here, copy this. And we set up our constructor. Now we're ready to use the sign-in manager. Here is gonna be our login method. So let's go and change all this over there. Instead of being employers, it's gonna be auth now. And then login instead of create. And I'll change this around and then change this. We'll create a new view model uh, for this. So I'll just uh, call it a uh, login view model, real creative login view model. And we'll need to create that. So copy back into our uh, files here inside the view models folder we created in the last video. I just create a new class. And I'll paste that in there. And then we'll only need a couple properties for now. One's gonna be the uh, username and then the password, and they'll both be required. So this would be the uh, username. And then control enter, and then we're gonna want the uh, password. Password. And then uh, they'll both be required as well. So required, and we'll pull that in from at the our data notation and pull this in and copy this and our password will be required as well. Okay, we created our view model, that's, that's all set up. Let's close this down and that should automatically be being pulled in. Okay, so now we're ready to use our brand new sign-in manager to, to check passwords. This is, we're going to be pretty much doing almost the same here. Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit. Like one, we're going to have to get the user from the database. And how are we going to do that? By the username that the, the user has given us through the model. So what we'll do is uh, we'll just call it user 
equals, and this will be a way, it's, we're gonna be using an async method. And then uh, user manager. And then we're gonna go and find by name. Actually, username async. And then all you need to do is pass in the username that they, they gave us. So username. Okay, and that's all you need to do there. Now we need to go and check to make sure that their pa password is valid. And to do that, I'm gonna leave this the same. And instead of the user manager, it's gonna be sign in manager. Tab, and then check password sign in async right there. Now this takes three parameters. One is gonna be the user that we just uh, we got here. And then the password that we wanna check. So that's gonna be model password. And then um, uh, if we want to set this to true or false, if let's say they continuously keep failing at logging in, do we wanna lock them out or not? And um, I'm gonna set this to false for now because we're, we're testing right now. So and that's pretty much it. Now this, we wanna leave the same. Like if they failed, we're still gonna get a, a property succeeded or not, true or false. So we wanna check that and then pass back okay or not. Now this is just the basic bare minimum what we're doing right now later on we're gonna to have to set up a thing where we can return jolt tokens we're gonna be building that all out we're gonna create a method it's gonna be a lot of work but uh for now just to just to check passwords and that's it and and uh, send back a true or false if they succeed or not that's the only goal for now but we're definitely gonna be building onto this a lot later on but for now uh this is good Let's go and uh, save this and we'll test this out in Postman. We'll make sure we boot it up though. Navigate it into your API. And then .NET run. And while that's booting up, I'll open up Postman. Yeah, I got everything set up for testing. So it's gonna be a post and then the API is localhost 5000 API auth login. Then you want to make sure you pass in the raw username and password. These are both required. And the username and password I created in the last video, if you've seen that. If not, you, you want to check that out because that's where we created our registered method. But these names are this name is actually in the database, and this is the username password for, for that. And then also make sure you change this to JSON application uh, to this. Uh, make sure you change that over. And this should work. So if we hit uh, send, we should get back a 200. Very good. And we it was successful. Very good. Now let's go and pass in no password. And we should get back an error because both these fields are required because we set that inside of our view model. So hit send. And we're getting error for that. That's really good. So let's put back a bogus password and hit send that in and it failed okay so that's that's working and then let's pass in a a uh, username that does not exist so test one that does not exist and we're getting a, an exception let's go and take care of that i don't want a, an exception thrown every time somebody puts in a wrong username so let's go back to our project and close this down and that's an, actually a real easy fix. So we'll just check to make sure if the username exists or not, if it's null. So if it's null, so user equals null, we'll just re return a bad request. So return bad request, and that's it. Let's just uh, reboot it just to be safe. So open this up and then control C, shut it down, hit up, .NET run, and then, uh, okay, rebooted. Let's go back to Postman again. And let's run the same thing and we should not get an exception. We should get back a 400 bad request. So hit send. Okay, very good. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so we successfully created our login method and we tested it. Now this is just the bare minimum and later on we're going to be returning JOT tokens so, so we need to set something up for that and we'll actually start that in the next video. And also if you're not quite sure about the sign in manager, um, I'll have a link down in the description for this page. Actually I forgot to check this page out in this video. But over here on the left side there's a whole bunch of methods and we're, we only used one but um, there's all kinds of different things you could do for 
dealing with logging users in, signing users out, all kinds of things. I uh, highly recommend checking this out. And we're actually going to be coming back to this and checking out, or actually using a couple more methods later on. But uh, for now, this is pretty good. Now, in the next video, we'll start building our JOT token and get our login method to return JOT tokens in the next video. So I'll see you then.